So I'm checking my daily Google alert for the word vegan, you know, like you do. And I see this headline, Vegan Robs Goes Mental. So, you know, pretty curious. I love Vegan Robs, uh, especially their Brussels sprouts puffs. I've talked about them before. I even put them at number two on my top 10 vegan foods list. We get a bag like pretty much every week, (laughs) almost every single time that we go to the grocery store. And we usually finish it like within hours. It's, It's ridiculous. I mean, it's not a huge bag and it's like me and partner and toddler eating it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. It's not exactly cheap either. I think it's like $4 normally, unless it's on sale. And it was also a pretty useful product when we first, I mean, we tried it and like, wow, these are really good. And we started using them with toddler. Toddler used to hate riding in the car, just like crying, screaming the entire time. And so we thought like maybe food would help to distract them. But obviously we didn't want to give them food in the car because we can't get to them, right? Driving and all of that. So then partner thought of like, hey, what about these puffs? Because they're so airy, they break down really easily, right? Like really similar to the the baby foods that you see, kind of like the first foods other than the puree. It's all these little puffy, airy things like those Gerber star things, basically impossible to choke on, right? So that's what we did. And yeah, it made riding in the car so much more pleasant. I mean, toddler doesn't mind it anymore. Like they're totally fine riding in the car, but it didn't used to be that way. And yeah, so I I really love those dang puffs. So I check out the article. It's actually a press release. Oh my God. Vegan Robs will launch bagged teas to help solve mental health issues for root causing personalized behaviors. That is that correct? That reads really weird to me. Basically, they're trying to solve loneliness, boredom, anxiety, depression, obesity, insecurity, lack of confidence, and sleep deprivation. Teas will derive from herbs, roots, and flowers with the expertise of herbalists, dietitians, and psychologists. Herbal and root remedies are becoming more widely studied and used to better people's lives as well as to discourage their dependency on drugs. Look, I'm all for like less dependency on drugs. I think everyone is. That's not really controversial, right? I mean, drugs have side effects, sometimes very serious side effects, sometimes side effects that have to be mitigated with other drugs. They can be very, very expensive. I think most of us, if it were an option, would prefer our conditions be treated by like diet, exercise, even teas. But number one, this statement implies that herbs are like necessarily inherently better than drugs, safer than drugs, like they don't have side effects or something. Obviously false. And number two, if there were evidence, convincing evidence that herbs were actually helpful with serious issues like depression and anxiety, I I think we would know it by now, right? Like you would have antidepressants derived from hibiscus tea and hemp and ginseng. We don't because there isn't. The only studies looking at hibiscus and depression are on mice and rats, not a single study on humans. There are a couple of human trials using ginseng, like this one that isn't quite looking at depression. It's looking at whether or not hormones blood glucose, calcium, etc., cause depression, and then whether ginseng has an effect on that possible relationship. And then there's this small study. It's women only. The other one was women only as well. No control. And they were getting three grams of ginseng per day. Now, I'm not the best at math, but I'm pretty sure that 29 grams divided by 16 would be 1.8 grams per bag. And I'm pretty sure that 1.8 grams is a lot less than three grams. And hemp helping with depression, I found no evidence for that whatsoever, nothing on that whatsoever. Slightly related, there really isn't any evidence for CBD helping with depression either. Story for another day. And I'm sure I don't need to mention that herbs aren't going to help with boredom or loneliness. That's, I don't, I, I, wow. And obesity, they don't have it on here. I don't know what's in it, but I guess if it has caffeine, like maybe green tea or black tea or something, it could be an appetite suppressant. So like, I I guess maybe it, I'm I'm reaching here, you know, I'm trying to find something, but like, yeah, the, a tea's not 
if a tea's not gonna help with obesity. Oh my God. So this is all very similar to what I found with the Four Sigmatic, you know, the mushroom teas and coffees and whatnot. Very little evidence for the claims that they are making. And the studies that do exist use way higher doses than what they're putting in those little packets. All this to say, I'm convinced. Might as well throw out my Wellbutrin in favor of this, what is it, 16 tea bags for $5.99, so almost $12 a month. Funny enough, that's actually more <laughs> than the cost of my meds. Worth it, I'm sure. Vegan Robs has found through research that effective herbs, roots, and flowers can lower the use of pharmaceuticals, lower blood pressure, increase mental stability, and ease the mind from everyday issues, even for a moment. Even, I think they're saying like, even if only for a moment, I think is what they're trying to say. Maybe this is me being cynical, but it, it sounds a whole lot like we know this doesn't actually relieve depression or loneliness, or boredom, or anxiety, but, you know, if you believe it, then maybe it kind of will for, like, the few minutes that you're drinking this stupid tea. Maybe that's not fair. I don't want to assign bad intentions to this. I try not to do that. I try to assume that people are doing what they're doing because they believe in it, right? That they believe it's the right thing to do, not because they're trying to scam people out of their money. You know, I, I believe that vegan robs, that they are doing this because they really think that it's going to help solve mental health issues. <laughs> it's hard, man. Even just saying that, like, it's just, oh my God, it's so dumb. Your tease. Oh my God. It's hard. You know, it's hard not to view these stupid products as scams, as just obvious scams, trying to get people to spend $6 on 16 tea bags. Like I can get a, a, like 100 tea bags of like regular caffeinated black tea Kroger brand for like, I don't even know, like $6, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it tastes great and it actually does something. Like it's got caffeine, so it gives me like some amount of energy. It actually does what it's supposed to do. I know I talk about this a lot and this seems like just another stupid thing that vegan companies or really any of the kind of natural, organic, or really a lot of companies now because they see that this is a huge market, not just plant-based, but the kind of organic, natural, sort of hippy-dippy stuff, right? So you see now Cheerios with like non-GMO on it, right? I mean, it's you see a lot of brands kind of getting into that whole Thing, right? I think, what did I just see? Uh, not food, but makeup related. CoverGirl, that's like cruelty free now. I had no idea. I think they've been for like a year or something. They just put out or are putting out their pure line, which is all vegan, you know, and it's supposed to be better for you, kind of skincare, more natural or whatever. So yeah, this seems like nothing new, just another sort of bullshitty thing. But I do think that this is different. I think this is a whole nother level. There's a big difference to me between a vegan company marketing its chips or whatever as non-GMO and like maybe good for your digestion because it has probiotics and a company implying that their products are substitutes for medication. That's beyond the pale in my opinion. So yeah, we're not we're not supporting this company anymore. I'm not buying their dang puffs anymore. I will find something else. I guess we'll go with those stupid hip, hip peas. They're not great. <laughs> They're just not, but my kid likes them. Whatever. I could do with less carby, snacky bullshit anyway. It's like, it's not a health food, which of course, you know, they, <sighs> point is th this is like not something I can stomach. You know, once you start talking about, we're going to help you with mental illness? Like, no, I, I can't. I can handle the non-GMO. I can handle the organic. I can even handle some of the like unsubstantiated nutrition claims, whatever. I can't handle this. I cannot stomach this. Vegan food companies, any food companies, stop trying to treat us. Other, I mean, treat us with treats, but like stop trying to treat our ailments. It's not your job and you're really bad at it. Your job is to just give us delicious alternatives to cruel products. That's it. That That is it. <laughs> like, I don't want you trying to treat my depression. That's what my doctor is for. That's what my drugs are for. I'm just over it. I'm so over it. It's constant. 
you know, like this, again, this is a whole nother level of garbage, but even the little stuff, it's just constant. Like we were gifted a subscription to Vegan Cuts, a three month subscription. We got the December box, which was pretty good. It had a lot of yummy stuff in it that we had not tried before. Had these um protein cookies that ugh, I can't even remember the brand now. It's got like a squirrel on it, but we got the chocolate one and they're really good. Like the first ingredient, I think in all of them is peanut butter, pea protein, I think. And they're just, they're super tasty. They're not like the Larry's or whatever. We had some of those too. I think that was from a different box, a different vegan box that my dad had when we were visiting. It had some of the the Larry's, the main like vegan protein cookies or whatever. And they are just nasty. They taste like protein cookies and they're nasty. But these, because the main, you know, thing in it is peanut butter, they've got a nice, like more, hey, this is actually a cookie and not a disc of protein powder <laughs> and like oil. It's just nasty. So yeah, they're really good. Um, We tried some like just some other chips and stuff, like a, a chickpea kind of chip that was really good. And some other, it was almost like a, like a sort of rice cake, but it wasn't also really, really good. I can't believe I didn't write any of these down. And then we get the January box, which we just got yesterday or the day before. And it's, the theme is like new year, new snacks or whatever. It's such a bad box. Like one of the things are these detox balls that have charcoal in them. Another thing was this like stupid elixir that was like, I don't even remember what was in it. It smelled disgusting. I did not taste it. It actually, it smelled kind of like molasses and I guess you're supposed to drink it. I don't know. My partner dealt with that. It was gross. Also had this stupid like energy drink, a more natural kind of energy drink, I guess, that of course had like a butt ton of stevia in it. So I took like one sip and about died. And it had some other like, you know, whatever snacks, like this one bar made from uh, lupini beans. It's like some type of bean. The only reason I know about it is because I was reading this vegan keto book and she used those in like half of the recipes. And I was like, wow, this seems really doable, you know, like where the hell do you even find those beans? But I guess they're like kind of keto friendly or the most keto friendly kind of bean or whatever. So this had those in it and I I could taste them. I could taste something, but you know, like that's fine. That's cool. I like trying new things, foods I haven't tried before. And there are a couple other like bars in there too, stuff I hadn't tried. So like, that's all fine. But just the, like, just the detox, like even, even stuff that's fine. Like they, they sent us this pretty large jar of date syrup, which like, that's cool. I've never used that before. I don't know. It sounds good on like pancakes or waffles or something. That might be pretty delicious. But even on the packaging, it like calls it a superfood. How the hell are dates a superfood? They're like the worst fruit. They've got like nothing in them except for like fiber. They're garbage. <laughs> <laughs> They're garbage fruit and they have so many calories too. Like you can easily get a lot of calories from dates. Like what? Okay. What is a superfood? I don't even know. It's not anything. It's just, just, again, I'm not trying to, you know, assign like bad intentions, but man, it's hard. Like what the hell? You, it just seems like you're trying to market this shit. And like, I guess I'm a little bit more sympathetic when it comes to like some sort of curated box because, you know, there's only so many vegan companies and that's kind of what they're going for. They're not just going to put like Doritos in the box, right? Like they want, they want vegan companies and, and newer products. And unfortunately, a lot of the vegan and the pseudoscience, it comes together. So a lot of these, these products have like detoxy kind of whatever pseudoscience bullshit. So like, it's going to be hard I guess, to give people new things if you are cutting all that stuff out, right? I don't know. Maybe not. I just, just wish it would stop, you know, and there's like no solution really. I mean, I hope maybe, I mean, I'm not even like, hey, boycott the company. Like, I'm not going to say that. If you like the puffs, see the puffs, like <laughs> whatever, please don't buy the teas, you know, like maybe the product will do so poorly because they're talking about expanding the line. Um, the teas aren't out yet, just to be clear. This is just a press release about them. They're going to be launching them this year. They're they're about to showcase them at some expo, I think. And then they want to expand the line with like bars and snacks and stuff. So maybe if these teas do really, really poorly, like that won't happen. That would be cool. It just sucks that there's there's such an incentive to do this. Talking about bad intentions, I, I think I think it's kind of a mix. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't really think that every person, what am I trying to say? That every like 
one of these like smaller companies that people are just like, we believe in this 100%. I suspect that it starts as like, hey, here's this could be, we want to help with depression. We hear that herbs can do it. And we're going to work with these herbalists. And yeah, we're going to do the research. And then maybe they actually try to do the research and they see that, mm, well, there's not a whole lot going on here, but you know what? We've already kind of committed ourselves to it. And this is another product that we can sell and, you know, we can make money. And so I guess what I'm saying is it's really easy to convince yourself that it's fine. It's fine. There's evidence for it. It's fine. And maybe, you know, even if there isn't really a whole lot, it's not like it's going to be harmful. It's just herbs. I would suspect there's a whole lot of that going on. You know, a lot of um, maybe even kind of some subconscious, like, you know, on some level, on some level, you know, this tea isn't going to do shit for someone's depression. Like, you know, or maybe you don't. I'm getting too much into, that's not fair of me, but that's kind of just my own, you know, speculation on stuff. I'm not saying that the people involved in this company are bad, not at all. Like we, we all do that on, on various levels and things become really hard when money's involved. You know, it's, it's really hard to be unbiased. And look, a lot of people are like, herbs are great and they're fine and don't worry about it. <laughs> and drugs are bad guys, you know, especially antidepressants. I mean, there's a whole anti-antidepressant like movement pretty much. So, you know, that's, that's a real easy, easy target. 